What if you have the power to see the future, how would you use it? In today's movie recap, a girl is born with the ability to see the future. In her peaceful life, she will encounter three youths and she will see impending danger for them. Witness how she will defy fate to save them. A woman named Constance and a man named Ezekiel Sims were in a wilderness capturing photos of spider webs for documentation. They were searching for spiders, but they couldn't find them. Ezekiel mentioned the uncommon types of spiders the Antaranians believed to possess the power to give abilities to people. According to Constance, these were mythical spider people who punished evil men with their black poison. However, Constance also stated her preference for a scientific approach over legends as she believed these small spiders could cure hundreds of diseases. While Constance was speaking, she suddenly felt abdominal pain, attributing it to the child she was carrying. Despite this, she refused to rest, believing she was close to what she was seeking. Ezekiel suggested Constance take a break, but she insisted there was no time and thanked him for the umbrella he gave her. After Ezekiel talked to Constance, he returned to their shelter to search for more information. Suddenly, Constance arrived, showing a jar with small spiders inside. Abruptly, Ezekiel shot their companions. Constance, puzzled, asked him what he was doing and why he killed their friends. Ezekiel explained that he had been searching for those spiders for years. Constance responded, stating that it could help many people, but Ezekiel had no interest in helping others due to the lack of assistance from anyone for him and his family. Despite Constance's reluctance to give the jar containing the spiders, Ezekiel insisted on taking it. He shot Constance and fled, but just in time, the Antaranians arrived and aided Constance. They brought Constance to their place and had her bitten by the small spider to heal, and it was also where she gave birth to her baby. A man named Santiago took the lead in helping Constance and assisting in the childbirth. He mentioned that Constance's child would face challenges in the future, but he assured her that the child would be resilient and return. Santiago then comforts Constance that he would be there for her. Few years later, Constance's child has grown and her name is Cassie Webb. Cassie became a paramedic and her story began in an ambulance with her partner and colleague, Ben Parker. They were transporting a woman to the hospital for immediate treatment when Cassie first encountered Maddie Franklin. Maddie suddenly appeared in front of the ambulance while skateboarding on her way to school. At the hospital, the doctor informed Cassie and Ben that the patient they brought would be okay. Accompanying the doctor was a young boy, the child of the woman they assisted. He handed them a piece of paper as a token of gratitude for Cassie and Ben's help to his mother. Cassie suggested giving it to Ben, but he declined. In that same hospital, Julia Cornwall, the stepdaughter of the woman Cassie and Ben assisted, was also present to check on her mother. During lunchtime, Cassie was still pondering where to take the card given to her by the child as both she and Ben disliked family-related matters. However, Ben mentioned that he might be considering starting a family and adopting a dog. He also revealed that he had met someone, and from Cassie's observation, it seemed serious. Cassie jokingly called the woman a lucky lady. Ben showed Cassie his fortune cookie message that read, You have winning personalities, while Cassie's fortune stated, You have no future. They laughed together, and Ben joked about the printer being broken at the place they bought the cookies, suggesting they shouldn't eat there. Cassie went home, and there she first encountered Anya, who was talking to a man. Upon arriving home, Cassie gave milk to her cat and suddenly thought of checking the card given to her by the child. She decided to place it in her cabinet along with memories of her family. Cassie also considered opening one of her mother's journals about spiders and exploring more of her mother's memories. The next day, they rescued a man who had an accident on the side of the bridge, and his car was about to fall with him inside. Cassie and Ben pulled him out, but unfortunately, Cassie got trapped inside the car as it plunged into the sea. Underwater, Cassie woke up, seeing webs and surroundings with the letter S. She heard voices and suddenly woke up as Ben saved and revived her. In the ambulance, Ben checked Cassie's vital signs, but she had a flashback where she could see what Ben was about to say. This confused both of them as Cassie repeatedly had her vital signs checked and Ben was surprised. Cassie reassured him that she was fine and just wanted to go home. Ezekiel went to a grand palace where orchestras performed, offering a magazine to a woman before taking her to a private room where something happened between them. Afterward, he unexpectedly saw the future in his dream where three women with spider-like faces appeared and one of them kicked him out of a window leading to his death. Startled, he sat down out of fear and was asked by the woman beside him if he had a nightmare. Ezekiel revealed that he sees this vision repeatedly and believes it may be a curse. His companion stated that they would eventually die someday and Ezekiel declared that he would find those women first before they kill him. He also mentioned that the National Agency of Security has been searching for him for a long time. Unaware that the woman is one of the National Agency of Security which was searching for him. 
The woman attempts to arrest Ezekiel, but he successfully stopped the woman from pulling a gun, extracted information, and killed her, taking her ID afterward. Cassie attended the gender reveal of Ben's sister-in-law, who appears to be Mary. Cassie briefly chatting with Ben and his companion outside before entering to meet Mary. They gathered with other women and guessed the name of Mary's baby. Suddenly, the scenario repeated, surprising Cassie. When Mary asked for Cassie's guess on the baby's name again, Cassie, in shock, blurted out that they've already done this, leaving everyone puzzled. Ben called Cassie, informing her of a fire, and when asked if she was okay, Cassie told Ben about experiencing deja vu. Ben and Cassie went to the fire scene to help, and Cassie suddenly foresaw what would happen there, including her male companion's fate. She informed her companion about what she saw, offering to take over driving, but he refused. Cassie witnessed the events unfold as she predicted, realizing it was too late as her companion's vehicle collided. Tearfully, she attempted to perform CPR, but it was too late and he lost his life. While playing with his spider, Ezekiel talks to his subordinate, Amaria, attempting to locate the whereabouts of the women who will supposedly kill him. Amaria shows possible depictions matching the vision Ezekiel had. Ezekiel mentions that these women are still teenagers, but in the future, they will develop powers and attempt to kill him. He instructs Amaria to find the specific woman, assuring her that she will be rewarded for her efforts. Cassie had her eyes checked and the results came back normal. She questioned the doctor about the visions she experiences. The doctor explained that trauma could be a cause, but Cassie doubted it since she witnessed her companion's death. The doctor showed Cassie that all her test results were normal, suggesting rest and watching movies as a recommendation. Cassie followed her doctor's advice and watched movies, but Ben still checked on her regularly, expressing concern, although Cassie didn't respond. Cassie stood up to heat some food when suddenly something was thrown outside, but when she opened the door, it disappeared. She realized she was seeing future events again. On the other hand, Ezekiel's subordinate, Amaria, located Cassie and Julia walking alone. While Amaria was tracking them, she communicated with Ezekiel. Meanwhile, Cassie boarded a train and foresaw another future event where Ezekiel would search for them, intending to harm Anya, Julia, and even Maddie, who were also on the same train. The events unfolded gradually with Anya boarding first, followed by Julia, and then Maddie. Concerned, Cassie took action, telling people that she could see their risk if they stay at the train. She declared an emergency and warned that Ezekiel intended to harm them, prompting them to flee. Just as they exited the train, Ezekiel entered, searching for them. Maddie got angry because Cassie wouldn't give her skateboard, but she urged everyone to run. Cassie noticed Ezekiel inside the train and instructed them to flee, but she saw the police in the direction they were supposed to run. Julia then shouted that Cassie was trying to abduct them. Cassie pointed on the ceiling, where Ezekiel is crawling towards them. She explains to them that Ezekiel planned to kill them. With urgency, they ran away and boarded the train. On the train, the lights went out prompting Cassie to consider exiting. She saw Ezekiel above the train resembling a dark Spider-Man. They ran out but the police arrested Cassie. All of a sudden, Ezekiel pulled them, causing a commotion. The police fired at Ezekiel, but he didn't get hit and threw them aside. Cassie and the others got into her car, shocked and discussing what happened. Cassie introduced herself and asked for their names. Julia thanked Cassie for protecting them, but Cassie insisted their parents should be protecting them. The three explained that their parents were busy and working out of town. Cassie was pleased to hear on the radio that the person causing trouble at Grand Central Terminal was being sought. However, it turned out they were describing her as the suspected kidnapper of three teenagers. They realized they were the only ones who saw Ezekiel crawling on the ceiling and chasing them. Julia thought everyone suspected Cassie as the kidnapper since she reported it to the police. Cassie clarified that it wasn't a kidnapping and came up with a plan. She tossed Maddie's cell phone out of the car window, preventing her from calling her Uncle John to locate them. Cassie reassured them that it wasn't a kidnapping. On the other side, Ezekiel continued searching for them, calling Amaria as they were being located. He wondered how the four knew he was headed their way. He instructed Amaria to beat the police in finding the four. In the forest where they hid, Cassie mentioned that she had never seen the man chasing them before. Maddie asked how Cassie foresaw it and suddenly Julia recognized Cassie as the paramedic who saved her and as her stepmother. Anya, who lived in their building, also recognized Cassie. Confused, they looked at Maddie and Cassie revealed that Maddie had flipped her off. Julia asked who Cassie really was and Cassie explained that she could see the future. Maddie laughed and threw something at Cassie to prove her wrong because she did not predict that Maddie will throw something to her. Julia suggested giving Cassie a chance and Cassie explained that she couldn't control the events but was certain she had saved their lives. Julia asked how Cassie's ability worked and Cassie admitted she couldn't control it. 
Maddie asked if Cassie knew the man walking on the ceiling, but Anya clarified that he didn't walk but used his hands, resembling a spider. Cassie pondered and excused herself, promising to return after a few hours for safety. Despite their reluctance, Cassie assured them she'd be back in three hours and instructed them not to do anything foolish. Cassie returned home and removed her license plate, then revisited her mother's journal. Reading about the Los Arrhenias, she thought it might be similar to the man they encountered. Trying to stick to the wall like the man, she found it didn't work. As she continued reading, she discovered that the Iranians could predict the future, and the picture in her mother's journal matched the man chasing them. Still in the forest, Maddie suggested buying food, but Julia insisted on staying put since Cassie told them so. Anya mentioned their lack of money, but Maddie claimed she had some. Anya expressed irritation, stating that having money didn't mean Maddie could do whatever she wanted. Julia asked Maddie about her family, and she mentioned living with maids. They eventually agreed to go to the nearest eatery where Maddie noticed Julia smiling at some men behind them. Maddie invited Julia to talk to them. A man at the restaurant recognized Maddie, Julia, and Anya from a newspaper article, so he stood up and called Amaria. Ezekiel promptly left upon receiving the call, and just as Cassie arrived searching for the three, they were nowhere to be found. Cassie discovered them dancing on a table with men. She intervened, but as they exited, Ezekiel grabbed Julia, hitting her. Cassie also felt a stabbing Z, Z, dot Z, Z, and e pain in her abdomen realizing another vision was unfolding. Quickly, she got into her car. Meanwhile, Julia, Maddie, and Anya continued dancing at the table. Suddenly, they spotted Ezekiel who chased them at the train station. Cassie, arriving in the nick of time, crashed her car into the restaurant, rescuing the three. Before they could get into the car, Ezekiel grabbed Cassie's leg, but she kicked him away and sped off. In her anger, Cassie told them they were impulsive, entitled, and only thinking about themselves. She emphasized that their future could have he changed if she hadn't intervened. Julia apologized and Cassie insisted they should genuinely feel sorry, leaving the three stunned into silence. On the other hand, Ezekiel is still searching for them and talking to Amaria. Amaria mentioned Cassie's identity with the surname Webb, and Ezekiel found it familiar. When asked if he knew her, Ezekiel denied the possibility. On the other side, they first looked for a place to stay. Upon arriving, Cassie mentioned that she would bring them to their parents' house the next day. However, Julia didn't agree, stating her mother was not there, and she was unsure if her father wanted her to return. Maddie and Anya also had their reasons. Julia asked for Cassie's help. The next morning, Cassie decided to return to the restaurant where they were last chased by Ezekiel. There, she unexpectedly witnessed the events unfold again, finding Ezekiel talking to her future self. He revealed that, in the future, these three girls would kill him and inherit his powers. He pressured her to disclose their whereabouts. Suddenly, Cassie woke up, realizing it was just a dream, and she promptly woke the three girls. She spoke to the three and explained that the man's hands contained toxins, causing pain. The more contact with it, the more poisonous it becomes to the system. Julia asked what would happen, and Cassie replied that it would stop her heart. She proceeded to teach them how to perform CPR. Maddie mentioned it was something she had never said in her entire life, but she thought Cassie was a good teacher. She showed a photo of her mother and the man chasing them, who is Ezekiel. Anya asked if her mother knew Ezekiel, and Cassie responded with a maybe. Maddie thought it all might be because of Cassie, but Cassie explained that all she knew about her mother was her interest in researching spiders, as reflected in her journal. Cassie excused herself, wanting to find out what was really going on. Upon Ben's arrival, she talked to Ben, but despite his inquiry about what was happening, Cassie just excused herself, assuring him that she would be back. As Cassie boarded the bus, she continued reading her mother's journal. Upon reaching the forest where her mother used to search for spiders, Santiago suddenly appeared behind her. Cassie wondered what Santiago was saying about coming back. He informed Cassie that he had promised her mother that he would be there for her. Santiago revealed that Cassie's mother went there to extract healing properties from spiders, thinking she was protected. He explained that Constance was misled by her friend Ezekiel due to selfishness, leading to the theft of spiders and Ezekiel's subsequent curse. Santiago took Cassie to where her mother died and where she was born. Cassie questioned why her mother risked her own child's life to get there. Santiago explained that her mother wanted to see Cassie's future and that the threat didn't stop when Cassie was born. Santiago then revealed how her mother was betrayed by suddenly pushing her into the sea. Under the water, Cassie witnessed her mother's past experiences before she was born, including the genetic condition she should have, her mother seeking spiders to cure her, and the eventual embrace that led to her mother's disappearance. Cassie realized that she had misunderstood her mother's concern for her, and Santiago explained that sometimes sacrifices need to be made for the people we love. 
Cassie wondered how she could connect with her mother, and Santiago revealed that Cassie herself made that connection, emphasizing that she needed to explore her capabilities and that her past was one of the reasons she was there. Cassie expressed the need to stop Ezekiel from killing the three girls, and Santiago shared that once Cassie mastered her power, she could be in multiple places simultaneously, becoming the only one capable of changing the future. Santiago added that with great responsibility, great power would come to Cassie. Ezekiel is still troubled as he struggles to locate the girls, persistently pressuring Amaria for not being able to find them. He threatens Amaria, claiming that the girls will kill him and he is capable of killing her too. Cassie, Ben, Julia, Anya, and Maddie were watching a movie and playfully bonding when Mary suddenly arrived, appearing to be in labor. They hurriedly went to the hospital, swiftly located by Amaria and revealed to Ezekiel. He promptly left to confront them. Just as Cassie returned home, she noticed their absence. Peering through the window, she sees the futuristic vision on the impending confrontation where Ezekiel would attack Julia. With haste, Cassie took control of the ambulance she spotted, just as Ezekiel was approaching to pursue the three women and their companions. Ezekiel caught sight of the women, but Cassie intervened, crashing the ambulance and triggering the bomb Ezekiel carried. Cassie instructed Ben to rush Mary to the nearest hospital while she and the three women quickly left the scene. Cassie directed Anya to use an automated external defibrillator AED and aim it at the ambulance's ceiling to electrocute Ezekiel. The plan succeeded as Ezekiel touched the roof and got electrocuted, saving the group from further harm. The ambulance broke down on the road and in a moment Cassie foresaw what would happen. She swiftly devised a plan. Cassie vowed to protect them no matter what and after that they rushed out and ran. They scattered fireworks around, anticipating Ezekiel's arrival. When Ezekiel caught up and pursued them, the fireworks hindered him. They hurried towards an approaching helicopter, but just before it exploded, Cassie saw what would unfold. In a brief confrontation, she confronted Ezekiel before the helicopter erupted. Cassie remembered Santiago's words about mastering her power, allowing her to be in multiple places simultaneously and being the sole individual capable of altering the future. She successfully achieved this, aiding Maddie, Anya, and Julia from falling. Despite being struck in the stomach by Ezekiel, she continued to witness the unfolding events. Cassie climbed a billboard, with Ezekiel in pursuit. Upon reaching the top, Ezekiel became trapped under falling metal and met his demise. Cassie fell into the sea and saw the letter S beside her. Julia rescued her, and they performed CPR, successfully bringing her back to life. Meanwhile, Mary gave birth and Cassie, who was admitted to the hospital, assured Julia that she has everything she needs. At Cassie's residence, Julia brought food and Cassie's emails. Cassie remarked that her vision has improved. When Anya inquired if Cassie could see them in the future, Cassie responded affirmatively, stating that she sees Anya standing up for her beliefs. Maddie was described as someone who never gives up and Julia was portrayed as more powerful than Cassie. Maddie added that despite their lack of knowledge about Cassie's future, her words still make sense, emphasizing the impact of Cassie's insights and the movie ends.